if you own Bitcoin, you do self custody, you're not impacted. You're kind of like you live outside of that system now. And that, that especially in these times, at least me, is a, is a pretty safe place to be. Thanks for tuning into Stacker Chats. Stacks is a Bitcoin layer for smart contracts. I'm Gina Abrams, and I'm joined by Mimi Bali, Stacks founder. Now, it's been a whirlwind in the crypto industry, the banking sector lately, um, but Bitcoin has remained strong. And what are your thoughts on the sort of future of the Bitcoin landscape over the next six to 12 months? Yeah, I think the, the past weeks have been a bit scary in the traditional banking sector. It's uh, I, I actually really hope that the Fed is able to get things under control because the I know we are passionate about Bitcoin and we are sort of like early adopters of the technology. But in many ways, I, I feel that the rest of the world is like not ready for it. They are not uh, they're not prepared, and a slower adoption of Bitcoin, in my view is actually a much uh, p- more peaceful path. It's, uh, it's not as disruptive versus uh, a sudden collapse of the banking sector. And then suddenly people are rushing towards Bitcoin or other other technologies. I think that would be very, very disruptive uh, to society as we know it. But I do think there are enough cracks in the system now that um, I'm really hoping that the, the legacy system and the Fed can actually get things under control. But if you look at some of the, what's going on, uh, basically, just a high-level summary for those who are not uh, aware of what's going on. A couple of U.S. banks recently failed, like uh, Silicon Valley Bank um, and, and 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 others. And basically, um, the core thing that was happening underneath is that um, these banks were buying U.S. bonds at a certain interest rate, and when the uh, the Fed started hiking rates there are new bonds on the market now that are much more desirable because they actually pay you much higher interest rate. So what that does to the previous bonds is that it sort of like devalues them on the market, uh, meaning that people have much more attractive bonds that they can buy instead. So the older ones, they start trading at a discount. Right? Um, and the banks don't have to sell, sell these things, right? Like because these are sort of like paper losses on their balance sheets uh, because, okay, the, the market value for the old bonds is, uh, is now down, but they don't have to sell it. But if there is a bank run, meaning a lot of people start withdrawing cash from the bank, then the banks are sort of like forced to realize those, those losses and they actually take, take the hit. Meaning that a lot of these banks, it wasn't just Silicon Valley Bank, but I think the Wall Street Journal identified something like 180 US banks where, which they might be insolvent if a lot of people are withdrawing cash out of the bank, right? Which is what happened with Silicon Valley, where a bunch of startups, they wanted, they kind of panicked, everybody wanted to withdraw cash and, and, and the bank collapsed. So this is a very real thing. And the, the Fed is coming in and they're sort of like backstopping a lot of these deposits. But what that does is that they are basically printing a lot of money. Um, they're not doing it using the traditional instruments that they have been using before. It's like um, it's a little bit of like you know they hide behind complexities, right? So they have introduced new types of financial instruments, but to effectively print more money to backstop uh, some of these losses, which interestingly they have caused, right? Like the the, the Fed has caused uh, these uh, this, these dynamics in the in the market themselves by suddenly hiking rates when nobody was really expecting them to high trade and they were doing it because of inflation and then why is there inflation because they're printing a lot of money right? so it's all it's all sort of like interest related and it all goes back to um uh, the, what the legacy system really is doing and uh, my best guess is that they're going to print a lot more money and they're going to try and get everything under control and i hope that they can actually right because um inflation People can live with, but hyperinflation is much, much worse than, than inflation. Uh, in either either scenario, like personally, I'm I'm bullish on Bitcoin. Uh, I think Bitcoin is sort of like an exit from this system, uh, where whatever policies these people are implementing, or if a, a financial institution is going under, if you own Bitcoin, you do self custody. You're not impacted. You're kind of like you live outside of that system now, and that that especially in these times, at least to me. Is a, is a pretty safe place to be. 
Thank you. And <clears throat> I'm curious about, you know, let's take it to the extreme scenario. Um, what would a situation in which sort of hyperinflation could potentially lead to hyper Bitcoinization? What would the Bitcoin landscape look like at that point? Yeah, that, that, I think. As even as a Bitcoiner and someone who uh, want this technology uh, to succeed and to reach like billions of people on the planet, I am pretty scared of that scenario, right? Because what that's going to mean is we, we are already seeing that regulators are coming after uh, Bitcoin and crypto. They're trying to make it hard for um, entrepreneurs and companies that work in the industry to get banking access or they're, they're making certain moves where it's becoming hard, to, especially in the US, uh, to operate businesses uh, in this industry. But if a strong exit to Bitcoin happens, I think you would see actually a lot more resistance uh, from, from, from legacy institutions, from sort of like uh, regulators and so on. And it, it's unclear if that is going to be good for Bitcoin. Like there might be a lot of short-term turbulence and uh, long term, you know, I, I remain very optimistic that uh, Bitcoin is just superior technology and we have a long history of better technology is always replacing legacy systems. And I think it's almost like writing on the wall that uh, Bitcoin is just like far superior technology to the, to the legacy systems that will happen. I'm, I'm just not convinced that uh, a hyperinflation type scenario is the best way to get there. I think it's just going to be just too disruptive and um, can, can cause a lot of panic around, uh, around the planet. Yeah, absolutely. I was also curious in terms of, you know, developments and tools, applications, things that people can actually utilize their Bitcoin in beyond as just an asset. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Yes, yeah, so I think we are um, kind of like seeing this revival of building on Bitcoin, like people uh, call this the Bitcoin thesis, which I've been kind of like pushing forward for many years. Uh, Interestingly, a lot of people didn't believe it, uh, even even like a few years ago, or even two years ago, uh, there were, a lot of people were skeptical about this thesis. And that thesis is that uh, a lot of these other um, chains and, and projects, they're kind of like experimental. And once you actually find product market fit, and then there is a good use case, uh, eventually that will come to Bitcoin. And it will come to Bitcoin in a more mature, more durable fashion. And I think we are actually seeing some of that play out now. Like we're seeing so many uh, NFT projects that were kind of like best in their class in whichever uh, smaller ecosystem, and they're kind of like moving to Bitcoin and they're, they're finding kind of like a new home or, or a new audience uh, and are very energized by it. Same with, I think, if you look at marketplaces, uh, uh, I think Magic Eden just launched on, on Bitcoin and they're coming in and that's, that's actually good, that's healthy. If the competition is going up, bigger players are entering uh, the Bitcoin ecosystem, more developers are coming in, more users are coming in. So I think all of that is healthy for Bitcoin. But in general, uh, connecting to the first point, I don't think that the Bitcoin infrastructure and technology even is ready for suddenly going from like, you know, uh, like 50 to 100 million users, depending on how you measure it, to uh, more than a billion users. I do think the technology needs to mature more so that we can. Um, uh, onboard people in a more scalable way, uh, the UX of different wallets. And I think like it, it, many things need, need to improve uh, before we can reach that goal of like, you know, Bitcoin in the hands of a billion people around the planet. Mm 